Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue our discussion with a standard template library, this time talking about unordered multiset. So with unordered data structures in the standard template library, usually we're able to get some sort of performance gain because we don't need to maintain some order. Again, this is usually a difference between using some tree-like structure for ordered structures to give us logarithmic performance versus unordered structures where we can usually get away with just putting a bunch of stuff in an array or some sort of uh, array or link structure in order to improve our performance. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at unordered multiset. Now I will warn you, it's probably useful if you have seen some of the previous lessons in this playlist regarding set, unordered set, or multiset, uh, because we're gonna be building around and providing a lot of the code versus writing it from scratch today. So with that said though, let's go ahead and dive into CPP Reference, our favorite website here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to find us uh, unordered multi-set. Now, again, this is something that's new in C++11. Uh, so we've had it for quite some time at this point. So it's worth knowing about. And like all the set data structures, they're based off of having a key, for instance. So that means the actual element that we're going to store. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to be storing a custom data structure. Again, if you've watched some of the previous lessons, you'll have seen me do that, which is going to require us to write our own hash function here. Okay, so we'll look at unordered set and then unordered multi-set in a moment. But unordered multi-set is essentially going to give us a lot of the same capabilities of unordered set. So if you have that, again, uh, you know, if you're familiar with that data structure, this should be relatively familiar, relatively uh, useful to you. Some of the functions will be a little bit different, like count will actually return you a value that's not just zero or one, because in multi-set you can have multiple of the same items. Remember, they don't have to be unique. That's where it comes from for multi-set. Um, and then in this particular lesson, I'm also going to show you how to iterate through buckets. We haven't done that previously, so I'll just show you that. It's an interesting tool for debugging and thinking about performance a little bit. Uh, and it's just also useful to see how some of these things like custom uh, hash functions work, which you have to implement if you're sorting some uh, key uh, or I shouldn't say sorting, <laughs> this isn't necessarily a sorting data structure, but storing some sort of key uh, in a data structure. So anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and do a little bit of a code dive here. Um, and we're going to start off with just the unordered set. Now, unordered multi-set itself is part of the same header. So, you know, just include one of these. Again, if you're ever unsure about that, just look at the top here for the data structure to see what header you need to include. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do here is just define a simple data structure here, custom. It has two fields here, with their, which are integers. So, you know, it's enough to make the data structure interesting. Um, and you can think about how you might uh, build on top of this for your own data structures uh, if you want to use them with the standard template library. So I've got a constructor here, again, with a uh, member initialization uh, list here uh, to set up these two fields just to make it easy for us. Um, and I've got an equality operator. We're going to actually need this for unordered set, which I'm going to start with. Um, if I don't have this, then um, I won't know if when I'm inserting, if I have uh, a unique element or not. So I need some way to do that. And the way that I'm going to determine that is just by comparing the fields. Again, this is a trivial type, but if you have some more interesting data structure, again, you might need to do a more of a uh, comparison, uh, meaning if I've heap allocated a uh, tree or something, and I have a bunch of nodes, right? You'll need to do, you'll need to actually traverse that tree and decide if uh, both sides are equal. Okay, so <laughs> just something to keep in mind there. Uh, and then I just have a helpful uh, print uh, function, which will just print out the fields. And I also print out the sum of the field. That's not very meaningful in the uniqueness, but just kind of, you know, something to just see the type for. Okay, and then um, like in a previous lesson, I've defined two generator functions here, which you're going to see me use. These are basically functions that generate uh, custom objects. I've generated two of them just to take a little bit of a shortcut here. Um, they do the exact same thing here because I'm going to want to generate duplicates just to, again, show you the difference of the behavior with an unordered uh, set versus unordered multi-set, okay? Um, I'll get to the hash function in a moment, but... Um, again, this is something that you create yourself. So I've set it up here. Uh, what the hash function, actually, let's just dive into the hash function while I've got it here. And we can look at it here, but we need to provide this for types that we create. Okay, We need to know um, how do we determine which is a good placement to uh, put some object in our container data structure, the unordered set or unordered multi-set. 
Um, so we need a hash function that can ideally do this in constant time. So you can write a bad hash function, again, something to be careful about that takes a long time to compute. Ideally, you wanna do something relatively trivial. Um, and in this case, my hash function is just something kind of arbitrary enough, right? Um, to tell me which buckets to look in to find something, right? By just summing the two fields here. Uh, but if we look at this um, uh, for the uh, hash uh, function here, and let's see if I can scroll down and see, uh, you know, for all the primitive types, we have some specializations. Okay, so those are, you know, pretty reasonable to work with. But um, we could see um, here a custom hash function. This is just, you know, one way to, to base off of it. One way to sort of work with this would be if I just had primitive uh, types, for instance, um, or strings or, or something else that has hash functions and is just to, you know, retrieve a value from each of the fields and then do, you know, some reasonable uh, operation here. Again, you can read on ha hash functions here, but, but all the hash functions doing is returning you a number here. Okay. Uh, and that number, you know, which is size T that's usually some like unsigned uh, long uh, type here. In fact, if we click on it, it might actually tell us exactly what it is. Um, you know, it's, it's not less than 16 bits. I guess that's the guarantee we have. So it's usually some, you know, inter, uh, unsigned uh, type. Uh, and that's telling us what bucket to drop in, or it's giving us a big number. And then based off the number of buckets we have in our data structure. Okay, so let's say uh, we run our hash function here. Uh, so we take in a hash function of our custom object or custom data type that you've written. It goes into here and then it produces some like number here, one, six, two, nine, you know, it could be some huge number or whatever. Uh, it gets modded by the bucket uh, size or the bucket count in your particular uh, data structure. And then you produce some result, you know, seven or whatever. And then we know to look for that particular object in, you know, bucket number uh, seven here, okay? So when we're looking it up or storing it or whatever. Okay, so that's the idea here with what this uh, function is. It looks a little bit scary because we are doing uh, a struct here and writing in something that's callable. Again, this is called a, a func door. Um, and you can look at my playlist for this uh, video here. Now, some of the important properties are const here because we don't want um, modifications while we're actually computing the hash here. Uh, right, this this should be a non-modifying uh, structure. So if you don't include this, um, you are going to get compiler errors, pages and pages. So watch out for that. Um, and we don't want any exceptions either. So it's usually marked as no accept. Okay. So that's the hash function. Let's go ahead and return to our code. Uh, and we can see how I've just uh, set that up here. Okay. Not modifying the incoming type here, passing in by reference, and then const here, no accept. Okay. And there we are. Um, and then I've got a way I'll print, I'll talk about printing out the buckets here in a moment, but let's just go ahead and play around with this uh, code and get familiar. Okay, so I've got my unordered just a set. We're not at our multi set quite yet. Uh, the, the data type that I'm working with and the hash function. Okay, so this is all part of the type that I am uh, instantiating, right? I need to know what the type is. And then I need to know um, how I'm going to figure out you know, for each instance of this type that I'm adding into my set or inserting or retrieving, uh, where to look, okay? And that's the idea of the hash function that makes this fast and a fun uh, data structure to use, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do then is just run this generate uh, algorithm here, which inserts into our set uh, from the beginning five times, uh, it calls this gen function here, okay? And then I'm gonna do it again here, which is just going to put in duplicates. Now, since I have an unordered set, which doesn't allow duplicates here, I should only get one copy of everything, okay? Uh, and I'm only getting one copy because I have a, a quality uh, uh, test here. Uh, so I know if, you know, that these two objects are equal to each other. Okay, so that's the idea. I'll call each of these gen functions, which you look at them, are doing the exact same thing, returning me an object, starting from, uh, you know, it's going to give me 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, five, five uh, in each of the fields here, okay? Um, and then I will uh, print those out here, uh, same as we've done in previous lessons, and then I'll print out uh, how many elements are in our unordered set at this point, how many buckets C++ decided was a reasonable size, and then the load, which is usually the, uh, you compute that with how many elements you have over the buckets, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this. I'm using C++ 20, no C++ 20 special features here, and I'm gonna run this. 
Um, and then here is our output. Okay, so let me actually uh, rotate this just so you can see now. <laughs> Focus on the left side of the window. Um, you know, here are our elements. Um, that were inserted here by five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Again, you can see it's unordered data structure. So, you know, the ordering here um, is relatively arbitrary. Okay, that's the idea. Uh, we have five elements, 13 buckets given, uh, five over 13, yeah, about 38% load here. Okay, that's the idea. And then I can actually see here, which I'll talk about the printout of each of our buckets where our custom. Uh, you know, hash function laid things out. Now it happened to be that bucket two got the thing that summed with two, bucket four got the thing that summed with four, bucket three, you know, and so on and so forth here. Okay, so that's what just kind of decided here, you know, based off of our hash function. Um, uh, that's that was the uh, computation. Okay. Um, okay, so let's play around with this just a little bit here. Uh, our code. And now let's actually get into the multi set. Okay, so all I need to do here is change this to multi set. Uh, and then I think in my print function, I also had a unordered set, but we want to print out multi sets. Okay, make sure our templates match up. Uh, and then let's rerun this. Okay, uh, so let's rerun. And then now with the multi set, um, because I am uh, generating these values twice, you'll notice we get the same value in the same bucket. Now we are getting more collisions here. Things are hashing or falling in the same bucket. So from a performance standpoint, you might want to think about, uh, you know, is this a good hash function or not? <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, might just have to be if you're storing uh, values here, like integer values, again, this might be the best you can do, but we are at least getting some distribution, right? This is relatively, you know, on average constant time, right? We're only doing two lookups um, uh, out of the, you know, 13 uh, buckets here. Uh, but you can see our load, uh, you know, doubled here, essentially, because we have twice as many elements in the same number of buckets, okay? So something to consider with multi-set now that we're allowing duplicates, okay? And this is why these things like hash functions are super important, okay? Um, so let's go ahead now and um, look at you know, what happens if we write a bad hash function here, okay? So here I was just saying, you know, we're going to determine which bucket we go in by, you know, summing up the fields. Uh, let's just put everything into bucket zero here, okay? So I'll uh, rerun this here. Um, and I don't think I need to even uh, move my window. Everything's the same, but you can clearly see everything's just falling into bucket zero at this point, okay? So you do need to come up with some sort of heuristic for your functions and maybe do one of these tests here to see um, where things fall. Uh, so this is not good. This is um, O of n time for a lookup. This is worse than, you know, using a set or, you know, any other data structure here. Uh, so that's the importance of this uh, hash function that we're providing here, okay? That value that we're returning, um, you know, and providing here for our unordered multi-set. But now you can see at least the difference, again, with multi-set, uh, we're allowing for those duplicates to uh, pop in there. Okay. So the last thing to show you is this uh, function here for printing the uh, our unordered uh, multi-set buckets here. Uh, what I'm doing here is just iterating through our bucket count, uh, grabbing an iterator. Uh, and the way that I do this is I say, okay, for our iterator uh, in B here is just our uh, unordered multi-set. I'm saying the beginning, and I can provide the specific bucket that I want an iterator to. Because remember how this uh, data structure is laid out, right? These are the individual uh, buckets that we have here. And then they might have, you know, little links here if, you know, we've grown them. And, you know, in this case, if we've added something like zero, zero in this example uh, twice here, right? It would keep showing up in this uh, bucket here. Um, so that is the idea there. That That's the only difference. Usually we've seen, you know, dot begin uh, and no parameter. But in this case, each individual entry inside of this hash table here uh, has its own iterator, okay? That we can iterate, you know, downwards or however you want to visualize this, okay? So that's the idea. Um, and I also grab the ending here because it's a little bit easier. Uh, and then I just say, okay, well, we're not at the end. Just print out each of the elements and that's how we are handling this. So it's a nice way to sort of debug and uh, see how things uh, work there. All right, folks. Uh, so with that said, you can, as always, catch this lesson here on... Um, 
uh, courses.mshot.io if you want to keep track of your progress and see if you've done all those set lessons. Uh, we've still got flat set to talk about, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that otherwise. Uh, but hope you've been enjoying the series. Hopefully it was uh, useful to see some of the code, these hash functions. Um, but they're not that scary, right? You can follow along in the CPP reference and try to use some of the examples um, and, and build things up slowly in case you get um, errors here. Um, all right, and with that said, I'll go ahead and end this lesson here. Thank you, as always, for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.